Hello and welcome to the Anderson's virtual dealer training event for uh, March 23rd. Uh, Jeff Gilder here, one of the agronomists with the Andersons. Along with me today is Jessica Link, and we are going to um, run you guys through some side dress and some foliar application ideas uh, as we move into that season. So again, um, welcome to our webinar and we are going to uh, go over some side dress applications. So when we start thinking about nitrogen applications um, as we as we move from the planning season into that side dress application season, we don't want to forget about um, top dressing our wheat. You know, this also kind of plays into some of the conversation we're going to have today as we talk about product placement. Um, but um, kind of the three main side dress options in those ideas that that, that we're going to talk about today are really kind of the Y drops, um, our rolling colder carts, and then and then you know that traditional knife application that's going to be off of a toolbar. You know, so why side dress? You know, this is really our opportunity to do to do to to deliver nitrogen um, to our row crops in a in a really time timely manner, um, closer to when those crops need it. Uh, there's a lot more scrutiny. Um, when it comes to nutrient leaching, especially for uh, um, an early an early application of nitrogen, we want to make sure that we're timing that to when the crop needs it. Um, you know, better protection for that nitrogen. That's one of the conversation pieces that we're going to have today. Is really talking about volatilization and in in the opportunity to to minimize that. And in in the last thing on there is really the opportunity that we can start to add some other things into that tank mix besides nitrogen, um, things that the plant's going to need either through the root system, you know, or through the opportunity to move some sulfur into that plant, um, uh, zinc, and then and then maybe even some boron that's going to be a little bit more, a little bit more in a timely manner. That really rolls us into, you know, something at the Andersons that we're very, uh, very key on and that's in that's humic acids and and a nitrogen application. So when we start to think about a humic acid um, in in a nitrogen application, it's really about trying to minimize um, the opportunity for volatilization of that nitrogen and, and how we're doing that is is through our humic acids. They're going to sequester metals. Um, they're they're going to sequester nickel. Um, and if you don't have nickel, um, you don't have that urease and that ability for urease to convert um, our urea and nitrogen over into ammonia gas. So, 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 so without nickel, uh, we don't have the urease and we really minimize um, that volatilization of, of that urea and nitrogen. Uh, one of the things that we do know about a humic acid is that plants recognize that um, it really permeates um, the ability to move nitrogen or um, and other nutrients, you know, either in through a leaf surface or in through in in through that root system. This is going to happen through carbon chelation, where that um, where that humic acid is going to be able to, uh, to chelate around our nutrients. And because a lot of those are going to be in an inorganic form, they're not easily penetrated into either the root system or into that waxy leaf surface. You know, but but because that uh, plant recognizes that humic acid, we're able to pull those things and penetrate into that uh, plant and then that's where we uh, that's where we release those nutrients um, rolls us into one of our favorite products and that's going to be our ultimate lq uh, this is our 12 percent humic acid um, a really nice clean smooth product that uh, blends really blends really well this is our opportunity to add a carbon into that tank mix um, you know we do know that uh, with our carbon sources we stimulate that uh, beneficial microbes that are out there in the soil we really help improve that soil biome that's out there um, we we prolong the phosphorus and the nitrogen efficiency especially in those side dress applications um, if you were to hop onto our uh, YouTube page, you'll be able to see some mixing videos in there. One of the great benefits of the Ultramate LQ um, is the ability to blend into a lot of different tank mixes. Um, yeah, we, we have a really wide uh, pH range that we can blend into, so I would recommend that you hop onto that YouTube page and take a look at those uh, mixing videos. 
our general rates are going to be a gallon to three an acre. Um, besides the side dress application, um, great placement would be um, in, a, in a in a two by two starter uh, into our weed and feeds and even kind of in a post emerge scenario. But like I said um, on the previous slide, one of the really good benefits of the Ultramate uh, LQ is going to be that wide pH range, so you can have a lot of different things in that tank mix and not uh, and not worry about any uh, compatibility issues um, as you as you start to add into that tank mix. Um, we've done a tremendous amount of research when we've taken a look at um, adding a humic acid in, in, in into a side dress application on corn. Um, this is this is some stuff that we did in Ohio a couple years ago. This is um, along with their regular fertility program, but we took a look at 28% uh, alone in a, in a side dress application versus um, a colder cart in a wide drop application. Um, what we really want to highlight here, you know, is not the difference in the bushels between a side dress and a wide drop. We, we know that both of those applications work really well. Um, what we want to talk about here is really that we've that we've minimized that volatilization there. We've helped protect the nitrogen that's there and we've seen an increase in the bushels um, when we add a humic acid in into that um, side dress application. Um, We've 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 tested this product across lots of different regions um, from 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 east to west. Um, here here's a couple samples from Iowa and Illinois where we've done some side dress applications um, in in some really good high fertility um, scenarios, and and we're seeing a really nice increase in terms of bushels when we add the Ultramate into that side dress application. Um, this is a this is another one from Nebraska, um, where we did a side where we did a wide drop in a in a in a colder cart versus 28% alone, and and even in in a scenario where we were seeing 260 plus bushel corn, we were seeing a nice increase when when we add that humic acid in on that side dress because we're protecting that nitrogen. Um, Another product that we have that's in that 12% humic category is our Ultramate ZN. This is the addition of zinc uh, into that tank mix already pre-mixed. Um, you know, same thing, it's a sulfonated potassium uh, humate product, um, has a nice N NK in a, in, a, in a zinc component to it. Um, you know, this is our opportunity to talk about volatilization here. Um, really great stabilizer for nitrogen, reducing that volatilization. Um, you know, we're we're going to promote phosphorus utilization in there in, 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 in terms of timing. It's a it's a product that can be added into a into a starter mix, and and that's where we see that really nice benefit for um, helping feed our beneficial bacteria out there. This product uh, is a is a 12% humic product with the addition of the zinc component. Our general rates on this are going to be roughly a gallon an acre. Uh, the benefit of this is that at a gallon of the Ultramate ZN, we're going to we're going to provide one quart of a 15% zinc into there. Uh, timing on this, besides for the side dress application, it really fits really nicely into a two by two starter, uh, any of your weed and feed applications and, and also that post emergence. And we do know from our mixing um, that we're gonna mix uh, really well um, into herbicide applications, the addition of other micronutrients or other crop protection products that would be in that tank mix. Some research that we've done on our Ultramate ZN. Um, this was uh, this was a Nebraska study from this last year where we wanted to take a look at some different timings. So we looked at um, a pre-emerge uh, application with that herbicide. So that's going to be that weed and feed that we that we that we talked about, um, along with uh, taking a look at uh, that side dress application. And just like the Ultramate LQ, the thing that we're seeing is that we're helping protect that nitrogen, uh, especially from the volatilization side. And we're seeing that when we protect that nitrogen, especially late season, we're seeing an increase in our bushels out there. 
Um, this was a Nebraska study from a few years ago that we did, um, and this was taking a 1917-0, so this is a 1034-0, 28% mix, um, where we wanted to add some phosphorus into that tank mix, and we know that, um, that our utilization on phosphorus um, uh, increases when we add a humic acid in, um, plus the addition of the zinc that was out there, and we've seen a nice little increase um, when we added the Ultramate zinc in in with that 1917-0. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jessica and she's going to uh, go through our foliar feeding recommendations. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. So now we are moving into the foliar season, uh, foliar section of this webinar. So when it comes to foliar feeding, there are a couple of things that I like to note. Um, there are a couple of growth stages where it is very important to make sure that that crop has adequate nutrition because they are critical um, during the growing season. The first one is the V4 to V5 growth stage. That corn ear is determining the number of kernels around the ear. At the V8 to V12, that, that corn is determining the number of kernels long on the ear. Um, and also just in general during the vegetative growth stages in corn, soybeans, you want to make sure that they are able to overcome the stresses that comes with the growing season. So managing our nutrition properly can help mitigate as much of that stress. Then also with foliar feeding, depending on your soil type, it is a lot more efficient than our soil applied nutrients. Um, when it comes to more of a clay soil, that foliar feeding is in general six times more efficient than soil applied applications. And then in sandier soils, we're upwards of 20 times more efficient than soil application. And that's because we're putting that nutrition directly on the leaf surface. Those stomates open in that uh, crop recognizes the nutrients and is able to bring them in directly through the leaf tissues. When it comes to the compatibility of foliar fertilizers, um, a lot of the ones that we sell are very compatible with a lot of crop protection products. So your fungicides, insecticides, and your herbicides, um, very compatible with, with all of those. But we do always recommend to do a jar test just before you do mi any mixing to ensure that you won't have any issues in the field. So like I said already, that V5 growth stage in corn is incredibly important during that life cycle. So it is determining the number of kernels around the ear, which has a pretty big impact on overall yield at harvest. So if you have a 16 row ear, um, you know, those kernels go in pairs. So if you lose two kernel rows, that's about 25 bushel per acre. And that's that's determined at that V5 growth stage. If you have stresses going on at that time, that plant's not able to focus on on this important thing, and then you're losing overall yield at harvest. So when it comes to the growing season, there are a lot of things outside of our control. We can't control mother nature, we can't control the weather, um, but we do want to take care of the things that are within our power. And that big thing is going to be our nutrition program. Also at this time, uh, during these vegetative growth stages, that corn plant is growing extremely fast. Here's just a photo to show and visualize how quickly that plant's growing. On the left-hand side is a corn that is spray painted. On the right-hand side is that corn plant exactly one day later. So you can see how quickly that plant is growing. Um, there is a lot, there's a lot more increased need for nutrients at that time to support that rapid growth. And again, that V8 to V10 growth stage is determining the number of kernels long in the ear. So um, mitigating the stress during these critical growth stages and to be able to support this rapid growth is extremely important. Then when it comes to our nutrient deficiencies, I said, let's take care of the things within our control and that's our nutrient program. So if we have nutrient deficiencies, we have that law of the minimum. So I'm sure most people have seen this stave barrel analogy, but if you have one limiting nutrient, it's going to impact your overall yield at harvest. Um, our macro and our micronutrients are going to be equally as important. They're just needed in different amounts. So our micronutrients, just as important as our NPK, just needed in smaller amounts throughout the season. Then when it comes to our nutrient deficiency symptoms, when you're in your field and you're seeing any nutrient deficiencies pop up, then your yield has already been impacted. So if we can get out ahead of those nutrient deficiencies, we're gonna put ourselves in a much better position at harvest. 
but also I do recommend um, doing some investigation if you do have any nutrient deficiency symptoms pop up because they can be attributed to a bunch of different reasons. So purple corn early in the season can be hybrid specific. It could be because of phosphorus deficiency or it could be an impact of weather. So if you do start seeing any nutrient deficiencies, I encourage you to go do some research, uh, do some investigation to determine the cause of that so you're properly addressing your problems. So now that we've talked about the importance of our foliar, our foliar uh, fertilizers, we're going to start talking about some of our product recommendations. So first on the list is Sweet and Easy. So Sweet and Easy is a blend of three different sugar sources with a nitrogen source for stabilization. When it comes to Sweet and Easy, I like to use the analogy of starting a fire. So on the bottom of the screen, we have logs, sticks and kindling, and then paper. So when you start your fire, you want to have a long lasting, long burning fire. Um, we want to have that crop be healthy throughout the entirety of the season and building the base of your fire is going to be your uh, your logs, your NPK, your general soil health. That's the base and the foundation of your fire in your season. Then when it comes to our sticks and kindling, we're going to need that to help give it a little bit more energy to help catch fire to those logs. And we're going to call that in this situation a starter. So that starter fertilizer is going to help get that crop out of the ground and give it a really great start so those roots can reach the logs, the NPK. And then finally, we have our paper. So to give that crop a really quick energy boost, a really quick burning flame, uh, we have that sweet and easy. So because uh, sugar is a food source for the, the crop, you know, sugar gives that plant energy. We have sweet and easy to supplement that a little bit. Um, another analogy I like to use is it's that cup of coffee at two o'clock. It's a quick little energy boost to get through the day. Um, then up next we have Phosfix. Phosfix is a 749 with trace micronutrients and it has a lot of components to it. Phosfix is an extremely dynamic product that works really well in your system. First off, we have Phosphite. Phosphite has fungicidal properties uh, to help increase your overall plant health. Then up next, we have our humic and our fulvic acid. So Jeff did a really great job talking about the importance of those humic acids in our system, in our cropping systems and how the plants recognize humic acids and fulvic acids, um, increase our nutrient receptivity into the crop and help bring everything in. And then finally, we have our plant extracts. So our plant growth regulators in this mix are cytokinins, gibberellic acids, and auxins. So the three of those are plant growth regulators that help increase our cell elongation, um, cell differentiation, and cell division. So increasing our overall plant health, plant stress recovery. Um, up next, we have Phosphix in regards to Bex PFR. So anyone who is familiar with the Bex, with Bex hybrids, they have a really great agron agronomic research program where they test a lot of our products. They show the good, bad, and the indifferent. Um, Phosphix has done a really great job in all of their trials, um, earning it the PFR proven stamp. So it had to have a three-year positive return on investment um, for three consecutive years to earn this stamp. Here we had a 5.45 return on $5.45 positive return on investment average for three years um, with an average yield increase of about 2.8 bushel per acre. Then looking at some of our research with Phosphix and Sweet and Easy. So I forgot to mention this earlier, but Sweet and Easy is typically going to be an add-on to your uh, nutritional program. So if you're throwing anything onto the crop, Sweet and Easy is a great thing to add into the mix. Um, so in this situation, we tested the addition of our Sweet and Easy in combination with our Phosphix and got a 7.29 bushel per acre increase. I talked a bit about how Phosphix, the goal of Phosphix is to help mitigate stress in the cropping season. So um, here we applied Phosphix to a soybean field, which was treated with Flexstar GT. So if you are applying any herbicides that cause burn on your soybean tissues, Phosphix is a great addition to that tank. Uh, it will still burn. However, you have a lot quicker crop recovery that soybean plant is going to start um, uh, start its vegetative growth a lot quicker and recover a lot faster when you apply that herbicide with Phosphix. And then here's another photo just showing that same point again. The right hand side of that field did not have any Phosphix in the tank and the left side of the field did. 
Both sides were treated with prefix, but you see a quicker crop recovery where we had that phosphix. And next, we are going to talk about microblitz. So microblitz is a micronutrient blend which includes a fulvic acid. It's an 1185 with boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. All of these are in the EDTA form, so it helps with the um, with tank mixability and compatibility. Looking at each of those micronutrients, they all play a very integral role in the crop. So like I said, our micronutrients are equally as important as our macros, just needed in much smaller amounts. Firstly, we will talk about boron. Boron is needed in very small amounts. I like to spoon feed it throughout the season because if you apply too much at a singular time, you do run the risk of boron toxicity. Um, but it's very important for pollination and for grain fill, especially that reproductive side in the crop. Um, boron is an integral part of that. We also have manganese, copper, and iron. So the three of these have a very important role in chlorophyll and um, in chlorophyll formation. So, you know, that chlorophyll is going to be our solar panels for the crop, uh, help that plant create energy and create the sugars that it needs, um, plays an integral role in our photosynthesis. Um, so we wanna make sure that those needs are met throughout the season. And then finally talking about zinc. So zinc is, very important through the crop for leaf sizing, but we are finding uh, an increase in our zinc deficiencies in our soils. So according to ANL Labs, about 80% of our soils are under five parts per million in zinc. So supplementing that zinc, whether it be in our side dress application and foliar applications, uh, we can help mitigate the risk of deficiency. Here's just a map visualizing that same point as well. Those that zinc deficiency is becoming increasingly common in our soils in the Midwest. So we want to mitigate the, the uh, probability of a deficiency as best as we can. Microblitz is also PFR proven. It was applied at the R1 growth stage on soybeans and we had close to a two bushel per acre increase with an average return on investment of $16.70. And then showing some research here, we have, um, this was taken place in Ohio in 2020. We showed, um, you know, we had a starter program on both of these treatments. The left-hand bar did get the addition of a microblitz with a fulvic acid, and we had a 15 bushel per acre increase on corn when that was applied at the V5 growth stage. And then showing the similar, a similar effect in beans, um, no starter treatments were applied to either of these, but we did see when we applied the microblitz at the V5 growth stage, uh, over a three bushel per acre increase in beans. And that is all that we have for you in regards to our foliar and side dress opportunities. If you have any questions, please reach out to your territory manager for any pricing questions or any program recommendations.